to all of you positive parents. I'm Dominique and welcome back to my channel. So today we are going to be talking about chores. Chores, tasks, goals, whatever you want to call them. We all have them and our children should have them as well. Chores, goals, and tasks, they are all very important for, for children on the spectrum and off the spectrum. Um, some people may feel like if you have a child with special needs, they're already dealing with a lot that they shouldn't, that they should have to do chores like a typically developing child, but that's not true. I've worked with a lot of individuals with special needs in my career from ages four to ages 64. And one thing reigns true, especially when you get older in age, the, the activities of daily living or chores, this skill set is gonna carry you a long, 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 long way. When, when you do have a child with um, learning disabilities, special needs, or just someone who is neurologically different, they may not always have the same path that we always want to set them up for success learning how to clean learning how to cook all of these things these these things are super super important so this is why we need a choice of responsibility accountability um and just all of these really really core skills how do we get our kids to actually do chores okay so spoiler alert i don't think anyone likes doing chores <laughs> No child is going to be enthusiastic about completing these chores. So that's where we come in and we find ways to make these goals or these chores attainable. Here are five steps to increase your child completing their chores. This is going to be good. So the first thing you want to do is you want to break it down. Break it down. So you want to break this huge chore down into smaller steps. In ABA, we call that breaking a composite skill down into component skills. Composite skills are bigger skills like putting on socks, putting on your shirt, putting on your underwear. Um, that sounds pretty simple, right? But for some of us, we may need to break that down even further to make sure that they're doing it properly. Reach, can you grab, can you pull, can you place? So before you can put on your sock, we wanna know, can you grasp? Can you pull, can you place, can you grab? All of those things are important. So number one, you wanna break a composite skill down into component skills. Let's see an example right now. So here we're tackling school projects, and as you can see, he's not that enthusiastic about it. And I would never say, here, here's this massive project, just figure it out. I would break it down into a component skill. I would say, here, this is your job. Cut this, paste that, write this, place this there, and so make it simpler. number two is you want to use high P activity. So high P means high probability activities. In ABA, we have high P and we have low P. High P, there, it is very likely that your child will engage in that activity without a lot of prompts, without a lot of praise. This kid will likely do that activity anyway. It's a high probability. Low P is just the opposite. There's a low probability that that child is going to engage in that behavior unless they are supported, they are prompted, there are consequences, there are all of these things set in place. We all have high P and low P behaviors. When you are selecting a chore or a task for a child to do on a regular basis, choose a behavior that is a high P, meaning they are likely to do that anyway. So then you could just form it into a chore and make it more functional. For example, if your kid loves playing with water anyway, then you can make their chore washing dishes or cleaning the bathtub, something that already has a lot of water involved with it. If your child loves 
basketball, pick up all of the laundry around the house and shoot it in the basket. Something that they are likely to do anyway. I'm going to give you an example right now. Score. Oh, can I try? Next is grocery shopping. Uh, I feel like I'm at the grocery store at least three times a week and I can't always leave the kids at home. So I make sure he is helpful during our grocery experience. If you give them something to do and you delegate, then they're less likely to, you know, just get into things that may kind of irritate you and get on your nerves. So I usually give him two or three things from my grocery list and I have him find those okay. items. I need something new for my lunch. He needs something extra for my lunch. Well, not something extra. It was just something new. Something we haven't tried before. Try to pick a store that is super easy to navigate and that has natural reinforcers. This place, um, <laughs> you see he asks first, this place ha always has free samples and he knows if he goes shopping with me and he and he's on his best behavior, he may get a free Watch treat. Load the So this is the last part of his job while grocery shopping, but for him, this is the fun part. He gets to ride around. Another tip while selecting appropriate chores for your kids, you wanna pick something that they're gonna need in order to be independent when you're no longer around. B15. Okay, let's go find B. You lead the way. You lead the way. I know you are. You're a pro at this. So whenever we're at the airport or whenever we're traveling, it is his job, his chore, or his task to navigate the airport. He has to find a gate. He has to find a seat. Wave. It's his job to be able to know how to navigate the airport. He takes a lot of pride in being able to get around the airport all by himself. And you never know, maybe this time next year, he'll be flying alone. Number three, attract their progress. Everyone wants to know how well they're doing. Everyone likes positive reinforcement. If you thought I wasn't gonna talk about positive reinforcement, you were wrong. Everything comes with positive reinforcement, even chores. So one way you can increase chore completion is you can track their progress and pair that with reinforcement. So you can do something like this with a token board or a token economy. For this step, I decided to track successful potty training. So I'm tracking his progress by creating my very own token economy. Moms, you can do this yourself. You don't have to be a behavior analyst to create your own token board. You can label it um, by days. Um, see, I labeled it pee pee, poo poo, um, and just a try or whatever. You wanna print it out and make it all nice and cute. I added some pictures so he knows that this is his and he can you know, really identify with it. I put it next to his potty and then we explain the contingencies. One, two, three, four, five, six. Six stickers! So before what? we start, I would explain to him, say, hey, Reed, every time you All right. Do you want another potty, check? you get a sticker. Okay. Once you earn six stickers, then you get the iPad or you get an ice cream party. Or right. you get whatever. Uh, but you also want to pair right. the stickers with verbal praise or natural reinforcement. Okay. Number four is don't focus on the mistakes. Just reinforce what's right. Another way of saying this is we're going to place the mistakes on extinction and only focus on what's going well or what he's doing well. A good way to make sure you're not focusing on the mistakes is you can give him or her a chore that you are not that picky about. So please don't give your kids a chore like cleaning all of your very expensive vases or trophies or something that can't be broken. That's not cool. 
give them a chore where if it happens to be messed up just a little bit, if it wasn't done perfectly, if they burn a hole in their shirt, just get another shirt and start all over. I wanted to find a way that he can help out more in the morning with his routine, so we decided to try ironing. It turned out really, really well. He's the type that once you teach it, once you teach him how to do something, he can usually follow those steps really well. And he's not perfect at it, but hey, it gets done. Keep his hand out of the way so he doesn't get burned. He knows not to burn the shirt. <laughs> I'm just joking. Yes. Number five, you model the behavior for them. So the best way to ensure that someone is doing something to your expectations is to model it for them. I do this a lot when it comes to homework. Christian complains a lot about homework and sometimes I have to show him like, see, mommy has work to do too. And I'll just sit next to him and I'll show him how to stay on task. Another fairly new chore is learning how to cook on the stove. So we started out with eggs. This was his idea, guys, not mine. He was adamant about learning how to help me make breakfast, so I couldn't say no. After all of those chores, he's out running some errands with mommy. I think so. it's time for a little reward. Everyone, close your eyes. Everyone, close your eyes. Close your eyes. Round one. And It's super important to just make time for having fun. Let your kids know that we appreciate the work that you do around the house. We appreciate you growing and maturing. And this is just... Don't forget to subscribe. Just hit the subscribe like button. and share it if you're there. I know you.